Andrigan, Commissioner Adrian, Here. Commissioner Amirian, Here. Commissioner Stepanian, and Chair uh, Mardian. Here. Uh, item number two, uh, report regarding posting of the agenda. The agenda of this meeting was posted on or before Tuesday, December 2nd, 2008, on the bulletin board outside City Hall. Um, item three, approval of minutes, October 27, 2008, regular. Any comments, corrections, or from my colleagues? But I was absent. Uh, therefore, I have no comment and no corrections to suggest. I have no comment. Commissioner. I have one correction uh, under uh, approval of minutes, August 25th, regular. Um, I believe Mr. Amirian was absent. I was not absent. <laughs> you just don't let me get some credits, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, with that, I'll take a motion to approve the minutes of the 27th. Okay. I'll move that we, uh, I, I make a motion to pass the minutes of the uh, of October 27th, 2008. I need a second. Second. Yes. Thank you. Roll call, please. Commissioner Adrian. Yes. Commissioner Amirian. Um, uh, abstain. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Stepanian. Yes. And Chair uh, Yes. Uh, next item is oral communication. Discussion is limited to items not part of the agenda. Each speaker is limited to five minutes. Uh, the Commission may question the speaker, but there will be no debate or decision. Uh, let's see. I don't see anybody for oral communication, unless anybody. Uh, I'll close the oral communication. We'll start with uh, item number five, which is all business. A, proposed Cottage Grove Historic District recommendation to City Council regarding establishing a historic <coughs> district overlay zone. Um, today, the Commission is reviewing two of our proposed historic districts, and they both uh, caught up with each other in the historic district process. Um, your role today is to assess whether the uh, signatures that have been gathered by the proponents of the districts satisfy the ordinance for the designation or for the commission to go ahead and make a recommendation to City Council asking City Council to then approve the overlay zone change that would initiate and create the historic district. So I have a brief, or a brief uh, presentation for each of these and we're starting with uh, the proposed Cottage Grove Historic District. And you've seen this several times before, and in both cases, um, this will be the last time the Commission sees either of these district proposals before City Council's vote. So if you ever see them again, it will mean that they were designated. But if they are not designated, then uh, you, won't see, you could see them again if someone reapplied to, uh, to have them nominated again. Um, in the case of Cottage Grove, we're looking at this uh, relatively small area, one block of Cottage Grove Avenue in the Adams Hill neighborhood that has 14 homes, as shown in the map on the right. Um, you might remember that uh, this was kind of designed initially in the mid-1920s to be an English village. So many of the houses of the 14 have kind of an English Tudor revival style. Um, this uh, Brady Bunch view of the nine of the 14 houses shows a bunch of the Tudors as well as the Spanish colonial revival. There's a uh, altered folk Victorian that was initially the farmhouse that was the owner of the farmhouse actually sold the land that was then later subdivided to become the neighborhood. And then in the lower right is what's called a minimal traditional style house, which is the only non-contributing structure to the district. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, when we hired a historic consultant to prepare the resource survey for the area, the consultant found that the uh, Cottage Grove District met two of the city's criteria. It's only required that a district meet one of those criteria. And at a meeting several months ago, you reviewed this and uh, concurred that it does meet these two criteria, criterion G, um, basically meaning that it's a distinctive example of community planning and it shows associations with different eras of the city settlement and also criterion H, which talks about the historic or architectural cohesiveness, which in this area really refers to the kind of the Tudor revival style that so many of the houses have. Um, thinking about the contributing status, the one minimal traditional house is highlighted in red here, which means that 13 out of the 14 proposed homes in the district uh, do contribute to its character, which means that they were built within the period of significance, which here is 1903 to 1928, and that they haven't been changed so much that they've lost their character-defining features. 
Um, you'll see that this means 93% of the houses are contributors. Don't get used to this. This is a very high number for historic districts, and I think it attests to the fact that this is a small proposed district as well as one that hasn't had a lot of alterations over the years. And just to remind you, the ordinance requires that 60% be contributors, so we're well above that number. Um, what you're really reviewing today is the fact that the neighbors have submitted petition, a petition asking the city to create the historic district, and your role today is to verify that that petition has been submitted, that it's in order, and then you'll be making a recommendation for the uh, city council. Um, the petition was submitted on November 17th. Twelve out of the 14 uh, owners of homes in the district, I should rephrase that, it's the owners of 12 of the 14 <coughs> homes um, signed on to the petition, and it's a requirement that all owners of a house sign. So if there was a couple and one felt yes and one felt <coughs> no, that, that house would not be counted toward this. Um, so the 12 out of 14 means 86 percent uh, of the uh, owner's support, and the ordinance requires 50 percent. And in the case of Cottage Grove, there's been no uh, petition opposing the establishment of a district. So that's the presentation, and I think uh, there may be some people here to uh, testify. But uh, before I go there, uh, sure. one co question, uh, refresh my memory. When is the cutoff date for a petition? It was a six-month period from the time that you voted on October 27th. I don't have it in front of me. So it's passed. Um, it, no, it's in the future. It's so in the future. Well, it would have been, you know, early next year. I can't remember if it was March, um, but uh, we're well within the six months. So right now we're just basically the signatures have been the petition has been has been solicited and signatures have been obtained. Yeah, well, and what, I, what I've done <coughs> is the required number to uh, move this on. To yeah, the, I've verified that when when two people or, or more, not in this case, own the house, that they've all signed. The, the names of the owners match the owners on the assessor's records for ownership of the houses, mm -hmm. and you have copies of the petitions in your uh, package. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, are you going to... I'm going to open it up. Yes. Uh, I'll open the public hearing on this item. I have Mr. John Lacascio. Thank you, Mr. Marty, and John Locascio with the Glendale Historical Society. Um, on behalf of the uh, the board and members of the society, I'd like to uh, strongly uh, endorse and support the Cottage Grove application and recommend that you uh, vote to recommend to council to approve uh, um, this historic district application. And um, we would like to compliment the applicants, actually, for both uh, the applications before you today for doing uh, such a wonderful job with community outreach. Um, the fact that these applications have such high numbers of uh, approval in their neighborhoods, 86% um, and 72% respectively, that's a remarkably high number. Those are remarkably high numbers for historic district uh, uh, petitions and show overwhelming support among the homeowners in these districts uh, for approval. So we we would strongly recommend that, that uh, this goes uh, gets approved by council. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next speaker is uh, Uta Baum. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is Uta Baum, and I'm one of the applicants for historic uh, for the uh, Cottage Grove Historic District. Well, I'm back once more, and hopefully this is the last time. Um, and uh, I hope you've had a chance to review the signatures and um, uh, we'll make a final determination and move, on, move it on to City Council re regarding this designation. Um, we have, as uh, Jay already said, we have 12 out of the 14 uh, houses signed. And um, I will go back uh, once more to at least one of the owners and try to get his signature. But uh, again, we're well within the required percentage necessary. Uh, you might think that a, that a small historic district is much easier to, to uh, uh, move along, but uh, in a small district, each signature is, is more, much more important than in a large district because it counts for so much more. So uh, I, I think we did pretty good in getting, getting the 12 out of 14. Um, so I, this is a very important meeting, and I hope you will vote to move it ahead to City Council. Um, I want to thank you for your support all along this lengthy process, which 
I just know is going to get shortened somewhere along the line. Uh, mm-hmm. Last night I was at a at a get together in royal, in one of the Royal Boulevard homes and beautifully preserved inside and out. And uh, more power to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other speaker on this item? Uh, I just want to say that to my neighbor. Ilan so come to the microphone, Uta. Oh. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. I'll close the public hearing. I'm sorry, the order. Uh, any discussions? Any comments? I have a, I have a question. question. I just have a question for staff. Uh, more specifically for Jay. Okay. Hey, is there any limitation as to the number of homes that can actually constitute a district? No, the ordinance doesn't address the size of a potential district. Okay, so you can have... Uh, so some cities have districts with thousands of properties. Some have very few. Some have small districts, smaller than Cottage Grove even. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from my colleagues or any comments? I don't have any questions, but if, if it's a comment period, I'd like to make a comment. Mm-hmm. Questions? No. No questions. All right, comment period. Comment period. period. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I'd like to confess that I had never seen a Cottage Grove. I had never been there until uh, it came for us to kind of go and see and make a determination. I went there and, and I felt like I am in a different world. I just loved the street so much and took my wife to see that and I had taken my grandchildren actually to <laughs> see the street. <laughs> So today, uh, I would be delighted to recommend to the City Council, if I have the chance to make the motion for making this uh, street as a uh, uh, historic overlay zone. So th- I will say that and wait my turn again. May I second it? You're seconding it? It was a second, second, but you uh, I, I have not made the motion. I said I will you make, make the, the motion. motion. Oh, I'm sorry, I misunderstood you. All right, any comments, uh, um, Mr. Adrian? No, I just concur with my colleagues. I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for the city of Glendale. So I'm, for it. I'm all with, with everyone. Sure. Um, I just want to comment that uh, I'm I'm very happy to see that this application came back to us in 30 days for the signature. Mm-hmm. I thank the applicant for that. And I've always been a supporter for this, and I'll support it again, but I'll entertain a motion. All right. I will be glad to do that. And I also like to congratulate people who spearheaded this to become a reality, and all the neighbors, and uh, also Historic Preservation uh, Society. And they are always uh, in the forefront, and John is a good spokesman for that, and amen to you. And just to um, say the right words, I'll be reading the staff's recommendation. I will be reading the last sentence, so I'll be saying the correct way to talk to the council. And it says, I make the motion that Historic Preservation Commission recommends to the city council that the Cottage Grove district overlay zone be established. Perfect. Thank you. I need a second. I second. Second. Thank you. Uh, roll call, please. Commissioner Adrian. Aye. Commissioner Amirian. Yes. Commissioner Stepanian. Yes. I'm Chair Margie. Yes. All right. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, we'll go to the next item, which is all business B, 5B, I'm sorry. Proposed already even Highland Historic District recommendation to City Council regarding establishing of historical district overlay zone. Okay, and again, this is a very similar process to what you just uh, considered for the Art Even Highlands Historic District. And I'm sure you remember that this is the uh, kind of northeast portion of the Cumberland Heights District that was proposed several years ago, and this is the smaller section of it that has been brought forward by residents of the area um, so that part of this area could be recognized as a historic district. Um, This, as of now, is the largest district that has been proposed in Glendale. We're talking about 87 houses, um, primarily along Ardeven and Highland Streets, with bits of mountain and Cumberland thrown in. And uh, we have a lot of diverse architecture here, um, really reflecting some excellent examples of the period revival styles from the 20s and the 30s. 
the period of significance for the neighborhood extends from 1903, and I think I misspoke before, Cottage Grove was 1908, so this one's 1903 through 1955, so we hit um, lots of good Spanish uh, revival examples, lots of good Tudors and American colonials, and then we have houses that are very significant in the history of the broader city, um, you have already been at the top left, and one of the other Campbell family homes below that. Um, the Campbells were very much associated with Le Leslie Brand and the early history of uh, the city's development. Um, when our consultants resurveyed this area, and if you remember, this was a survey update from the Cumberland Heights survey, um, they found that it meets three of the uh, city's criteria. Criterion A, because it reflects special elements of the cities, and I would say this is primarily architectural, aesthetic, and social history here for this neighborhood. Criterion B, because there were a number of people significant in the city's history who were strongly associated with the neighborhood, especially the Campbell family. And then Criterion G, that it reflects um, patterns associated with the development of the city and especially distinctive examples of our community planning over the years. Um, 68 of the houses out of the 87 are contributors, meaning 78%, so we're well above the 60% threshold. 19 of the houses that are in white, all the contributing houses are highlighted in red, so you can see that on the map. And today, uh, just as with Cottage Grove, we're considering the petition that was submitted also in timely fashion by the uh, proponents of the district. Um, the petition was submitted on November 13th. We have 63 out of the 87 homes signing on, which gives us 72% of the houses. And you should know that this, the percentage that you're hearing today isn't necessarily the final percentage. It takes it up all the way to the city council hearing. So if the proponents, I believe you might hear, they're continuing to gather signatures, so that number may change before we go to city council, but we're already above the 50% that's required. And then again, there has been no petition opposing the uh, establishment of the district. And just so you know the rest of the process, which I didn't mention for Cottage Grove, um, if you concur and vote to recommend this to City Council, or even if you don't actually, we will be going to the Planning Commission on the 17th. The Planning Commission hears the proposal, the same thing you're hearing today, and makes a rec an advisory uh, recommendation to City Council. And then we're tentatively set to go to Council at the end of January for the introduction of the ordinance, uh, tentative for January 27th. And then that's a two-part process at Council. They introduce the motion, they take public testimony, uh, we make a presentation, and then on February 3rd, if that schedule holds, they'll vote on whether or not to designate. And that's everything. Thank you. Okay. Um, any questions to staff before I open the public? No, I have a question. You mentioned something there in your presentation, Jay, about uh, whether we do or do not approve this, uh, the petition. Yeah, at, the, at this point, it because still goes on is, to planning commission. Yeah, I shouldn't have said it so bluntly, but it I mean, you kind, kind, of <laughs> kind of struck <laughs> me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> at this point, because you're making an advisory recommendation, the planning commission gets to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So whether you could say yes, they could say no, the other way around, you could both say yes. Um, but we, the process continues nonetheless, and we go to city council with your recommendation. With or without our recommendation, it goes. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you, Jay. That's but good. but the statement was not a confidence builder, was yeah. it? <laughs> I, I realize it in hindsight. Yeah. I, was, I caught it, but then he caught it later. <laughs> oh, so. yeah. That's all right. That's good. Um, yeah, but it was accurate, at least. Okay. Uh, I'll go to the public now on this item. I'll go to the applicant, Cindy Soldwood. Nothing like our, our, uh, our leader, Okay. Tammy, yeah, I have a card. He's done all the work. No problem. Sure. Thank you. Leader, come forward. Uh, <laughs> being a leader is a dangerous thing sometimes. Hi. Good afternoon. My name is Tammy Rellier, and I am one of the lead applicants for the Art Even Highlands um, Historic District application. And I have to tell you, I'm so pleased to be back here again. You know, as I was driving in, it wasn't too long ago when in the city of Glendale, when you said the word historic district, people would say, what is that? And now I find it so wonderful that even if there are neighbors that don't necessarily support it, they know about historic districts. So we've come a long way in this city in terms of raising the awareness of such a wonderful um, and important preservation effort. Um, 
as you can see, we've been very hard at work. We have 87 homes. We've had 63 homes signed. And in fact, today, um, as Jay was mentioning, the petition process is still kind of fluid. And I have actually two more that I received just before the meeting today, which will bring our percentage, I believe, up to 74%. So we're still in the process of getting a few more households. We'd like our target would love we'd love to be able to have 80% by the time we get to council. So we're getting really really close here. So again, I just don't want to take up too much of your time, but again, I want to thank you for your efforts. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the support of you commissioners as well too. Thanks again. Thank so you. Jay, could I hand this these two you? These are officially yours. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> and we hope you more. Now. Thank, you. thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Do you still want to speak to this? Sure, sure. go ahead. Yeah. You are not opposing, are you? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been uh, one of these people fighting for this district since the old Cumberland. I, I know. <laughs> uh, my name is Cindy Sodwiddle. Um, well, good afternoon, Commissioner, Chairman and Commissioners. I'm Cindy Sodwiddle, one of the other applicants um, for the district. and. We are very, very happy to be back, having done really the, the work, the bulk of the work that we need to do to, to put this district in place. Um, we've collected signatures um, from an overwhelming 74% in a district our size, I think is an overwhelming support. And I can assure you that the support comes from a group of people representing the ethnic diversity of this city people who've been in the neighborhood six months and people who've been in the neighborhood for decades, young families, elderly people, a group of people with diverse interests and backgrounds who've come together collectively to preserve and protect our beautiful neighborhoods. So we're thrilled to be continuing on this process and thank you again for all of your support of this district and the other districts. And. Um, not too far in the path to go, so we're very excited. Thank you very much. Thank you Thank very you. much. Um, next speaker is Sally McKellar. She holds the key. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm Sally McKellar, and I live at 851 West Mountain Street, which is Artovan. Yeah. <laughs> Prona pronounced correctly me, yeah. from yeah. Valley Castle, Northern Ireland. <laughs> yes. Anyway, uh, they are peculiar streets, the dear old relatives laid out. <laughs> uh, I have peculiar names. Anyway, I am absolutely thrilled that we have finally gotten this far with your help. And um, I'm just simply lending my support. And um, since my friend back there, Tammy, um, has been doing really been doing all the work and I I have the party house so you'll all be invited yeah. to a party when this goes through <laughs> so anyway thank you very much and please uh, recommend to the city council that we get our district thank you thank you thank you um, last speaker is uh, Mr. John Lacasio Thank you again, Mr. Mardian. Uh, John Lacasio with the Glendale Historical Society. Um, at the risk of repeating myself, I guess I have no choice but to say that uh, the Historical Society um, endorses and supports uh, this application for Artavine Highlands. Um, this, actually, the whole process that we're in now began with the original Cumberland Heights application. Um, I think it was six or seven years ago when we started this very long road, and now we're finally seeing it reach fruition. So we're very, very happy that, that we're here today. Um, and again, we have um, an applicant, um, a, a district applicant that has um, met multiple criteria under the city's code, has an overwhelming number of contributing structures, um, and has overwhelming um, support of the residents. So I think it's um, um, safe to say that, that uh, you should very strongly urge council to approve this district application. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Uh, I don't see any other speakers. Uh, close the public hearing. And, uh, any questions from my colleagues or staff uh, on this item? I don't have any questions. Mm, all right. Then uh, I can entertain a motion. That's fast. 
Okay, but... <laughs> uh, or a discussion, <laughs> let me put it this way, a discussion. Um, I think all of us at a certain time have expressed our, or at least I have done, my excitement about this area, Arvin, to be a historic district. And I don't want to repeat that. I will just go directly, and if, if, if my colleagues don't mind, I will make the motion, uh, which would be that historic pres and the motion is that the Historic Preservation Commission recommends to the Council that Ardevin uh, Highland district, district, historic district overlay zone to be established. Sorry, I murdered the, the thing. You got Ardevin right. Ardevin, yeah, I was going to say Ardevin. I'm scared of uh, yeah, her. <laughs> Don't do what I did. Yeah. So I'm going to repeat what you said earlier. You call this area as an orchestra with different musical instruments. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I'll entertain a second. I'll second. Or a discussion. I'll second. Okay. Second? I'm Thank coming. you. Uh, I'll take a roll call. Commissioner Adrian? Yes. Commissioner Amirian? Yes. Commissioner Stepanian? Yes. And Chair Mardian? Yes. All right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, next item is C uh, six. It's new business six. A uh, proposed construction of a compressed natural gas fueling facility on parcel adjacent to former Southern Pacific Railroad Depot, located at 400 West Cerritos Avenue, GR number 10. That's right. I, I just wanted to make a brief introduction before I introduce my colleague Mike Nelson, who is the city's uh, newish mobility planner and part of our urban design studio. He'll be uh, making his debut for you today. I just wanted to establish if you, you recognize the uh, property that we're talking about as the Southern Pacific Railroad Depot, now where Amtrak and Metrolink uh, bring people into the city. Um, this is one of the earliest landmarks that we have in Glendale, number 10 on the Glendale Register. And it was built in 1923, and I think it's, you know, I think people can say it's one of the most recognizable and beloved sites in the city. Um, the proposal is for a project that actually isn't on the designated parcel. So we're bringing this to you to get an advisory <coughs> recommendation from you um, in preparation for a compressed, or compressed natural gas facility that's going to be placed on a site nearby. So Mike is going to kind of run that by you. But just so you understand that your, your vote is basically making a recommendation to the Public Works Department about whether the impact, if there is any impact potentially on whether the uh, depot would be eligible for continued listing on the Glendale or the National Register based on the construction. Here's Mike Nelson. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm just going to go over, start with the uh, background on the compressed natural gas fueling facility. Uh, the former SoCal Gas CNG fueling facility located at San Fernando Road in Fairmont in Glendale closed in 2006. Uh, since this facility has closed, uh, the city CNG fleet now needs to fuel at uh, the Clean Energy Burbank stations or downtown LA facilities, which are approximately 12 miles round trip. So uh, the total city fleet, which now consists of 31 B-line buses, 13 refuse trucks and three street, uh, street sweepers have to make that trip in order to uh, fuel up their cars. Uh, right now, the city has uh, partnered with Clean Energy to build and operate a CNG facility at the Glendale Transportation Center. Uh, right now, uh, just a brief description on what the proposed facility will uh, look like. Uh, it will be located in the parking lot of the Transit Center. Uh, the fueling facility site is approximately one-third of an acre, and it's on the southeastern corner of the existing Glendale Transportation Center parking lot. Uh, the fueling facility has two dual hose fueling dispensers and a canopy, which you see right that's an example of uh, the type of canopy that you would see. Um, it's proposed to be 25 feet wide, 45 feet long, 18 feet in height with 15 feet of clearance, and it's held by two square uh, steel columns painted white. And the signage is green with white lettering, and it contains a clean energy logo. Uh, 
going further in with a description of the location of the facility. Um, as you see Brand Boulevard's on the uh, southeast corner there, San Fernando Road is um, a little bit up on the northeast corner. Uh, as you see, the existing Southern Pacific Railroad Depot is highlighted there, kind of uh, towards the right there. Uh, try to get my pointer right, located right there. And then the approximate CNG fueling station site is located approximately 175 feet. Uh, south and east of the existing Southern Pacific Railroad Depot. And then there's also, uh, in addition to that, we got um, CNG compressor equipment, which is composed of a uh, compressor, electrical panel, and dryer, which will be located off-site, uh, still within city-owned land on uh, 1761 Gardena, located on the southwestern portion. And then there's going to be piping connecting the, um, the CNG equipment to the CNG fueling uh, facility and that piping will be connected up uh, through uh, underground piping on Gardena Avenue. Uh, just taking a look at the uh, preliminary site plan, uh, the existing depot is highlighted in orange on the, uh, the lower right hand corner. Uh, the fueling facility is approximately 175 feet uh, from the existing depot. Again, it's south and east of that, and then uh, it's approximately 700 feet away from the compressed natural gas uh, facility equipment. Uh, take a look at the existing conditions. The first picture that you see there on the upper left-hand corner is a view of the site looking northwest towards the uh, Glendale Transportation Center parking lot and the railroad depot. That picture kind of shows exactly where the fueling facility will be located. And so what you notice is that if you look at the picture and if you look at the far corner uh, there, you could kind of catch a peak of the uh, existing Southern Pacific Railroad Depot. So notice that that, that is not directly within the line of sight. It's uh, not even located on the parcel, but you know we're, it's adjacent enough to where we wanted to come uh, to you to make sure that when we build this facility that we don't have any risks of uh, affecting the listing status. Um, also, we have another picture there on the right-hand corner, a uh, view of the proposed fueling facility site looking south on Gardena Avenue. So what you would see is the uh, fueling facility would be located closer to that white warehouse building that you see uh, further down the street. And then this is a picture of um, the intersection of Gardena Avenue and Cerritos with a view of the uh, Southern Pacific Railroad Depot in the background with the fueling facility uh, proposed to be located on the um, left-hand corner. And as you look at this next picture, this is a uh, visual simulation uh, that is very similar to the um, last photo that I showed you with the proposed uh, clean energy filling facility and the uh, Southern Pacific Railroad Depot as we're proposing it to be located on. So um, just in closing, the sta uh, staff has reviewed the site and we found that there are no impacts uh, to the listing status of the Southern Pacific Railroad Depot. Uh, we recommend to maintain the existing landscaping along Gardena Avenue, as well as appropriate uh, additional landscaping uh, around the fueling facility to match the landscaping along the uh, Glendale Transportation Center, uh, matching the existing landscaping that's contained in the parking lot, as well as the approach to the Railroad Depot building. And if no problems are seen with this project, our next step is to go to the agency for design review and additional permit, use permit approval. So with that, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. I have a question. Uh, just stay on this slide. Um, this simulation is actually not quite this way. It's the fueling facility is further down. This seems so close to this. Am I getting that right? I mean, is this? It's beyond the parking area. Yeah, it's it way like beyond there. Right. It looks like it's, it's yeah, you're right. It looks like it's right in the middle line. of the parking area. Right. Yeah. Could be. The filling facility is actually, it is in the parking area. I think it's just in terms of where the shot was taken, because we are actually taking out uh, approximately 30 parking spaces. That was my question. And that was OK? In terms of when I actually did the environmental uh, on document on this, okay. uh, in terms of the uh, amount of parking that is available in the center, there is still quite a bit of parking spaces available on that lot. The issue when I did the environmental work was more in terms of people 
that were not parking, um, that were parking just from adjacent businesses parking on the lot without permits uh, versus actual Amtrak commuters that need parking spaces. So there's, a, there's plenty of available parking. And in fact, when I took the, um, when I took pictures on that site, there's always, that part of the lot is where there's always parking available. So um, running the environmental docks there is somewhere between 40 to 50 percent of parking available on that lot. You're doing a whole new landscaping in the parking too, correct? Well, in terms of the, uh, what, we're rec it, yeah. what we're recommending is that the parkway section of Gardena Avenue, when you're uh, with the two driveway cuts that were, there's a, um, two existing trees along uh, the parking way section of Gardena Avenue, and we're um, recommending that we keep those um, during construction. And then whatever trees that get removed, uh, that the street trees in the parking lot that get removed as a result of the construction of the compressed natural gas fueling facility, that those get removed and then, if possible, placed uh, somewhere else um, along the plan. For agency submittal, what clean energy is going to have to do is they're going to um, they're required to submit a landscape plan. That landscape plan will show existing trees that will stay in place, uh, existing trees that will need to be removed as a result of the construction of the facility, and also uh, per any proposed landscaping and the location of that landscaping. So for uh, purposes of the agency, they're going to have to submit all those documents. For our purpose of review is just uh, the distance between the structure, the new structure to the, to the depot. Well, it's so it's more than uh, well. I just want to make sure what our you know discussion. The purpose is, is to well, no. the purpose is to uh, with the dimension is to illustrate the distance okay. and the fact that it's not right there next to the depot. It's it's um, you know it's to the south. And I know that this uh, site plan that we're looking at right now, that you guys are looking at right now on the screen, is a little bit uh, misleading because it's not pointing north, but it's to the south and to the east of the existing uh, rail depot. When you, you when you come to the depot from Cerritos Avenue, the fueling facility is not staring you straight at the face. If you're at the building, you're not, you know, the, the fueling facility is not in the line of sight. It's it's skewed, uh, you know, to, uh, di it's skewed diagonally, so you're not looking straight at straight it. Ahead. And there's some distance to it. There's, you know, about 175 feet. When they're Fueling facilities going under construction, you're not, the building won't be impacted. Uh, the uh, proposed piping is not going to come within 200 feet of the building. So the, a lot of the impacts that are associated with the construction and maintenance and operation is not going to be affected by the, the building will not be affected by any of those operations. We try to, when we selected the site, we try to put it in a corner to where it's within the uh, transportation center but not uh, impacting the building. Okay. And just to clarify, okay. your, your review is primarily to establish whether or not the presence of this facility would affect the okay. designation. But if you have other comments, you can make advisory comments that will forward to to the uh, Public Works Department and to the Redevelopment Agency as it moves forward. So. Thank you. Any questions to staff? I have a, I have a question. Okay, Mike. I don't know, maybe a dumb question, but you have That's some okay. <laughs> Thank you, Ruben. My colleague there. Uh, the compressor site that you show here in this photograph, down there in the right-hand corner. Right. Uh, why are you separating the two facilities? Why is is there a reason why the actual pumping station or the service station is way over here and the compressor station is way on the other side? Well, I think there's a couple reasons, and um, maybe I'm wrong. I, to me, and why would you put them together? Why couldn't you put them together? Why don't you move it over? Um, I'll have Monica Altreus from Clean Energy answer that question. Good. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Monica Altreus, and I represent Clean Energy. There's a, probably a couple of reasons why we would make that decision. I believe one of them would be more of a visual impact. The equipment stands about hmm, 12, or the, the compressor stands about 12 feet high. Mm -hmm. So there would be a, a block wall, there would be a dryer component, and um, electrical. And I think initially that we were just trying to really preserve the railroad station and try and keep that visual impact to a minimal level. And I think that's why the decision was made to have them in separate areas. Well, let me ask you, from the look of, from what you're showing on the site plan, yes. <clears throat> is that whole parcel is that owned by the city? The city? Yes. And is there anything on that parcel besides the compressor? Uh, 
No. Uh, as I understand it, it's dirt. Mm -hmm. It's current s status. I'm not sure I follow your line of thinking. You're saying that you didn't want to put the service station by the compressor because the compressor stands 12 feet high in the air? I, Is that the reason? Off the well, grid. it's more Off of a, I'm thinking it was more of a visual impact. Mm -hmm. I was initially a part of the design team, but we've had situations in that part where a lot of jurisdictional agencies would prefer that the compressor be out of sight, and I think this was one way of... W wouldn't it be in the back if you brought the... In other words, if you took that service station and you moved it to the front, just move it over in front of the compressor off the cul-de-sac mm -hmm. of Gardena Avenue. In length as well. I the mean, you save all that piping underground. This Maybe is parking, parking issues as well. There, there'd be issues in regards to sound. Uh, I know that the compressor has some has sound impacts. And when I was when we were working with the clean energy team with the negative declaration that we prepared, pulling it to the back lowered the sound impacts quite a bit. There's an affordable housing site right on the other side of the cul-de-sac from Gardena Avenue. And having that distance really helped lower the sound impacts in terms of any possible issues with that site. And just in terms of, you know, in visual impacts, I mean, pulling it, pulling it back there um, really it helped us environment with environmentally. It helped us in terms of, you know, our adjacent neighbors. Mm -hmm. uh, it, in terms of not seeing the equipment, not hearing the equipment, uh, we really thought that that was the best location. Now are we talking we're, about the then, same thing? We're, we're talking about the CNG compressor equipment on the southwest corner. No, no, I'm talking about why aren't you taking the fueling station Mr. Chairman, site? May I just interrupt this? This I really think that this is not our business. That's a design decision. It is made somewhere, mm -hmm. and now we have to judge what is presented mm -hmm. to us as far as whether no, no, that no, no. will impact. I'm just wondering. I can answer that question. And I, I, get the I, question, I get the reasoning yeah. behind it. That's all I'm looking oh, for. Okay. The reason. I'm not going to. You, you moved on to the fueling facility, and I still was talking about the compressor. Okay. 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 The reason why we put the fueling facility where it was on guard, uh, further up on Gardena Avenue is that it's got more commercial uses. If we put the fueling facility by the cul-de-sac up front, mm -hmm. there's a couple of affordable housing sites in terms of we got you know, 31 B-line buses, and we got uh, several street sweepers and trash trucks. Mm -hmm. In terms of traffic impacts, when we ran the environmental, we, when we analyzed it, we thought it would be a better location versus having the buses go all the way down Gardena Avenue, pull in, have them be adjacent to the affordable housing sites, and then having them turn around Gardena Avenue, around the cul-de-sac, and have that be a potential sound impact, mm -hmm. have it be a potential traffic impact, uh, versus being closer to the Cerritos-Gardena intersection. Okay, okay. Have it thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. Thanks a lot. Mr. Marion, did you have a question to the speaker? Uh, no, uh, no, I don't. Thank uh, you. Thank Mr. you. I had a question. I know maybe it's not under our preview. Have you considered the safety factors of the compressor in relation to the railroad tracks? I mean, isn't it too close to it? Um, when we ran the environmental documents, uh, we submitted this to the state clearinghouse. Okay. And um, we uh, we had that we submitted it to the respective agencies. We haven't gotten any comments from the Southern California Rail Authority at this time. Okay. Well. Uh, uh, Thank you very much, Steph. Uh, anybody wants to speak on this side? Any study representatives? None? Uh, I'll close the public hearing and I'll discuss the matter whether the distance uh, interferes with the designated building. Actually, it's not the distance. It is location of the fueling station and fueling station and the compressor side, whether right. that will affect the designation of the uh, depot. Right. My opinion is is it will not, and we uh, we should kind of uh, approve or recommend the approval of this with the uh, agency that it uh, pertains. Do you have any other concerns? As I don't. I don't okay. know. Commissioner Stepanian. I uh, I will go for it. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Adrian. Mm, well, I'm still not really. Well, I, I understand that the explanation that was given, but I wasn't too sure. I would recommend that be looked at, but uh, personally, then we wouldn't have any concerns whatsoever here. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if this would come to our board if this if the station wasn't that in proximity to the. Uh, and, and that was looked at, and that's why. Yeah, we're I understand here, that. So. 
Okay. Well, well I think I'll, uh, um, you should be just where the fuel yeah, station I, I, is because that's where. Yeah, I uh, realize that. Yeah, I realize that. Because there's a city center uh, residential project right at the cul de sac. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions uh, before I entertain a motion? I don't or do know. I need to create a, have a motion on yeah, this? Yeah, you, sh you should have a motion so that we can have an official recommendation from you. Mm -hmm. I'll entertain a motion uh, on the item whether the location of the facility. I would recommend that the location of the facility will not impact the historic uh, registration, the historic uh, designation. designation of the depot. Thank you. Second, please. A second. We have a motion and a second. I'll take a roll call. Commissioner Adrian? No. Commissioner Amirian? Yes. Commissioner Stefanian? Yes. And Chair Mayer? Yes. Um, we'll go to item number B. 6B, storefront alteration and public arts. Landscape installation of a former FW Woolworth building, 201 North Brand Boulevard, GR number 38. Very good. So this is another project that is occurring at uh, one of our uh, Glendale Register properties. This is the uh, former Woolworth building, uh, designated as number 38 on the Glendale Register. It's at the uh, northwest corner of Wilson and Brand. I'm sure you guys know the building. Um, I show two pictures here to just give you a sense of its history. The building was actually built in the 1920s, and in 1942, F.W. Woolworth moved into the building and remodeled it, and the result of that remodeling is what you see in the top picture, basically a uh, streamlined, modern uh, commercial building that had uh, some very distinctive characteristics of that uh, streamlined, modern style in that era. In 1999, a, uh, the owner started making alterations to the building that had not been permitted or reviewed um, as to whether the property was historically eligible or not. Um, the commission intervened at that time and worked with the uh, owner, and I believe the Historical Society was involved at that point, as well as Historic Resources Group, one of the uh, local preservation uh, consulting firms. And the result of all of that work was that the uh, owner went ahead and added a second story to the building, saying that it was important for the ongoing uh, economic vi viability of the site. And then the commission approved that second floor addition, as well as new storefronts that you can see in the lower picture on Brand Boulevard, as well as signage and a new entry feature at the uh, opening of what was then the Zany Brainy store. Um, Zany Brainy is no longer there, and a new and in recent years, this was the site of um, a Salvation Army uh, family outlet. So you may know it as that. Basically, the proposal you're considering today is going to be to put a new retail use into the corner lot, or the, I'm sorry, the corner unit of the building. So if you look at the door on the left side of where the Shamford Corner is, uh, the new unit will be at that location. The proposal also calls for the installation of a new door in the second bay from the left, second over from the corner. So a new door and a new canopy over that door are going to be installed in the existing storefront, which are going to match the design of the previously approved commission storefront that you see where the AT&T store is over on the right side of the photograph. Um, I should note that this project is in the redevelopment area on Brand Boulevard, and representatives from the redevelopment agency are here to discuss some of the issues um, involved with the tenant who's moving into the space. But there were some un unanswered questions before we brought this to you, but there's um, strong interest in moving a tenant into this location as quickly as possible. So what I've done is identify um, locations that I believe would be appropriate for signage, which are consistent with the signs that the commission previously approved for the building. So you can see those in this drawing, and I don't believe that all of these signs would be possible under the ordinance or, or uh, would be even desirable, but I just wanted to show you that a sign on the Brand Boulevard facade would be appropriate where the larger rectangle on the right is. A smaller sign would be appropriate on the Shamford Corner. What I think is most important on this building is that no, none of the signage obscure any of the kind of details of the architecture. And on Streamline Modern like this, it's fairly simple detailing, basically horizontal kind of inset bands or the bands that kind of run around the corner. So we want to make sure that any signs uh, that will go up on the building won't uh, obscure those features. 
Then when we turn the corner to, oh, let's, let's look at the corner first. Um, two important things, this uh, at the top, this kind of fanciful gateway that was installed for Zany Brainy um, doesn't really mean anything to us anymore, so that's going to go away. Um, but most importantly, the uh, terrazzo that says Woolworth, which was part of the designation and is one of the character-defining features of the building, is going to remain as part of the new project. So we'll always have that reminder that this building used to be a Woolworths. Looking at the uh, Wilson facade, um, you can see that at the ground floor we have this kind of expanse of blank stucco. And since the 1942 remodel, it appears that this was pretty much a blank facade. I'm not sure the history of the vents and everything, but they've been there for some time. And this is the facade as it appeared in 1999 when the commission approved the new second floor and the storefront alterations. Uh, the applicant is very interested in kind of enlivening this facade with uh, landscaping and with kind of an art feature. And so there's a proposal that isn't required under the downtown specific plan or by the redevelopment agency. So it's kind of a, an offering to the city to kind of soften this, uh, this wall here. And the installation consists of basically some, f some almost freestanding pylons. These vertical elements will be attached minimally to the, uh, to the historic masonry walls. And interspersed between these will be kind of green screens, trellis kind of features that will be attached to the wall. Um, a small section of the sidewalk will be taken out uh, for planting beds. And then the most interesting feature is that this will also have an art component, which will consist of cut out metal figures that will rise up from the landscaping. And then there'll be a lighting element to the proposal that calls for lights that will go behind the, uh, the figures to silhouette them at night, and also lights at the top of the pylons that will wash over the, the building. Um, the only other alteration is proposed at the rear, and the rendering that we have isn't quite accurate. If you see the, where the location of the roll-up gate, um, they need to put in a secondary egress from the new shop. Um, the proposal originally was to put a kind of metal canopy similar to what was approved previously. That's not part of the proposal now, so it'll be more of a utilitarian rear entrance that will go in the location where the uh, roll-up door is. So I wanted to introduce Annette Vartanian Jackson from the Redevelopment Agency who will kind of tell you, you know, why we're here and uh, what we're looking at in terms of the tenant who's moving in. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, Commission members. Uh, my name is Annette Vartanian Jackson. I'm with the Glendale Redevelopment Agency. I wanted to first off thank you for um, considering this proposal. The agency is very excited to present this proposal to you in conjunction with the planning staff. As you may know, that this is a very prominent corner, and it has been vacant for a while now, and we really want to see this uh, building activated, and we believe that the applicant is doing, um, a, proposing a great project that will enliven the, the blank wall as well as the corner. Uh, Staples Boutique Store is... Uh, going to be occupying a portion of the building, which will be the corner. It's a new concept boutique store, which um, are mostly open in the urban areas in D.C., Boston, and New York. So we're very excited to have them come in. And I believe that the uh, property owner is also hoping to occupy the middle space um, with the restaurant or any other retail use. So these enhancements will, will definitely enliven the downtown area and help in occupying the space. And again, I really want to thank you for, for considering this proposal, although some of these items haven't been finalized in regards to the signage, but believe working with, with Jay, we can definitely work with the applicant and Staples and any other future tenants to, to be able to put signage that's appropriate and um, we'll take in, in, your, your comments and consideration. And we really, really thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're really, really welcome. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, any other speakers, or should we open the public hearing at this time? I think we're ready to go. Yeah. Uh, I need oh, to a ask a question. Sure, yeah. uh, these art elements here on the south south facade. Mm -hmm. Do we have any any say on this? Asking the applicant for certain kind of art or certain artists, or we are going to be resigned whatever goes there as long as the word is art <laughs> and a very difficult word to define that is right yes absolutely. Um, I, I think uh, you know this is part you know this will be attached to a Glendale register property so I think it's within your ability to make recommendations mm -hmm. to the agency to discuss the the quality or the type of art you have 
um, at staff level. We thought this was appropriate to the building. We think mm -hmm. something here is better than what we've seen on this blank wall for so long. Mm -hmm. We don't really view that as a historic condition that's worth preserving. Mm -hmm. And the downtown specific plan specifically calls out, it's kind of funny, it's as if it was written about this wall and it suggests that what it calls unarticulated facades, facades excuse me, be livened up with either art installations, landscaping, or other ways to kind of relieve the kind of stretch of bleak wall space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I have a question, Mr. Jay. Um, is this voluntary, this artwork? This is voluntary, so it's not part of any it's not, nobody's percent required art fee. fee. Even though it's under the downtown specific line, but there yes, is it's, no. it's a, all on uh, historic properties. The, there's no art requirement okay. under the DSP. Now, can you tell me how deep is that uh, planter area that they're proposing? Because it doesn't show it on the plan. I believe we have the architects for the project okay. who can help but with that. Before we get there, yeah. uh, I want to have Let's any other questions to staff. Uh, I, I don't have any other staff. Mm. Commissioner Stefani, any more questions? Sir, I don't think so. Okay. Go ahead, sir. We'll Good afternoon, Commission. My name is Jess Romero. I'm with KK Architects. We're the architect <coughs> for the owner on this project. It's approximately about 14 to 15 inches deep. Um, the property line sits about four inches from the face of the wall, and we do know it will be a moder um, modification to do that, but uh, we're pursuing to get your authorization first, and then we'll pursue the, the modification. Modification from <coughs> public works or? Yes, for encroachment. For encroachment, that was my next question. Now, how much actually is the sidewalk width? Eight feet. You, eight, eight foot, feet. one inch. So you have enough room to clear ADA and enough yes. walking yes. areas? Yes, minimum requirement is 40, 48. 40, 48, okay. So, so we have four feet, four feet above, uh, above that, so we have like six feet in front of that. And are you, are you going to retake the responsibility of maintaining the uh, yes. planter? Yes. Uh, uh, do you have any indication whether you will get permission to do that? You will get the permission for the encroachment? Yes. You do? We do. If you don't, then what we are talking <laughs> to you <laughs> is <laughs> irrelevant. Then yes. this will go away. Yes. So this will go away. So we'll <laughs> end up with a blank wall. Correct. Otherwise. And, and just uh, responding to Commissioner Adrian's uh, question, we've, we've put in the staff comments a recommendation that there be some sort of automatic uh, irrigation system yes. so that we don't have to go out with a little water and cans. Yes. So. <laughs> no water hoses out there. No Jack and Jill? No. In the <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you a question since you're here. What is this room where your middle tenant improvement is? What is this room? If I may step up. Oh, that, that is an, uh, an existing office, and that um, that particular space, that, that hatched area you see there, that has become a new um, um, seismic wall there, and that's why that room was created. So th that's why it has to remain, because that's, a, bar remain. that's a bearing wall there now. Uh, although the owner has stressed that in the future he would like to we look at options to open up that space again and retrofit in another matter to get rid of that wall, but as of right now, that's a bearing wall, so we're, we're not touching it. You know, the reason I'm questioning because that's kind of making you cut up of that whole space and I would rather see it more centered in those two columns, but mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure what that room was so it's structurally there for now yes. and we have nothing. To yes. When they built that second story back in 1999, that was a seismic wall. That's why okay. it's very, we're not touching it. Any other questions to the speaker? I don't have any questions. No. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, any other speakers on this item? We'll no. close the public hearing. We'll uh, discuss this item. Anybody wants to start the discussion on it? Are any questions, comments? I have, I have been doing. I have been starting. So starting. I'm going I'll to start with this, uh, Commissioner Stefani. And you've been hiding away from me. Oh no! <laughs> the only concern that I have is the canopies. It's kind of. Um, I don't think it's uh, working very well with the entrances to the uh, areas. Uh, but I really like the, the planter and the artwork to the side because uh, that wall, it's been an empty <laughs> blank wall forever. And that would give, uh, with the nice lighting that you have behind the artwork, uh, life to that wall and to the street altogether. I like that a lot. Okay. Mr. Adrian, thank you. Oh. I, I think I heard what you said, uh, Seth, about the canopy, mm -hmm. the the round, the canopy. circular canopy. I kind of looked at that too, and I was 
I'm too sure. There's already two existing. Yeah. The, yeah. the issue, the issue is those were previously issue. approved by the commission, so I don't think we can step back from that okay. um, since they're not okay. touching that part of the building. Okay. So it's probably better to just keep it consistent. There seem to be the canopy in these drawings, if you will, at the bottom picture there, shows the same canopies, right? Yeah, the, the drawings aren't quite accurate. They're not quite yeah, consistent with what's in, in the yeah. photo, right? Yeah, if you can see the photo, that's that's what uh, the new one's going to look like. Mm -hmm. Is it different than this also? It, it, I mean, it's, it's higher the up. Drawing, the drawing shows them lower, or and the drawing also shows a more decorative band running above the storefronts so that's actually yeah. not in place. That band is only on the Wilson. So I assume that band, if it was there historically, went away in 1999. So the band has gone away? There's still a plain stucco band, but the more decorative mm -hmm. uh, streamlined band is mm -hmm. not there. So you're going to add a canopy further down that's going to be in line with the existing canopy. That's yes. correct. Yeah. Thank you. No, fine. No, no, that's all. Thank you. My turn? Yeah, it's your turn, Commissioner. Okay. You can't uh, uh, get away this time. <laughs> I, have, I have actually no problem with uh, modifications. I think they are going in the right direction. I like them. I like what I see. Uh, except uh, my recommendation would be definitely to have a name artist to produce this art, to bring uh, some culture to our city, um, a, a name. And my recommendation would be with this, what I see here, flat uh, human figures, there's an artist with an international uh, fame who lives in Southern California, and his name is Jonathan Borofsky. I don't know him, and I don't get commissions from him. But he, he is did the dance. He did the dancing clown in the tutu in Venice. Is that what you're uh, going for? Uh, he, well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I, I am familiar with he, one of his work, which is called The Chatterer. There's a huge figure, and he keeps talking and talking and talking. But anyway, his work is just awesome. I think we should have that kind of art here. That is one name that uh, it comes to my mind. Uh, uh, because uh, uh, anybody can do a cutout from a book <coughs> and, and put it there, but that's not what I would recommend. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how that can be in, in, in incorporated or. You know, one, one thought we can hear from the agency on that, because I think there's a, there's a, an anxiousness to move a tenant into the space, but the uh, the art component and the landscaping component isn't as vital to their moving in. So you might ask the uh, agency how the phasing of the project might allow for reconsideration of the, the art going in. Can uh, any representative from agency? Because I think you're right, Mr. Amir, you need something more special than that. This has yeah. been done several. <laughs> Good afternoon, members of the Commission. I'm Neil Tantavosi with the Redevelopment Agency. Uh, we'll take your input into consideration. There is no formal process given that this is not a require, requirement for this project. And uh, this is sort of the first project that's actually incorporating art into a building. We don't have a um, process uh, within the city yet in terms of uh, selecting an artist. Mm -hmm. This is complete, completely a private developer's choice. Mm -hmm. uh, I hate to discourage them from, um, you know, any kind of a bureaucracy, uh, let's say. But if you have any thoughts in terms of what um, the art component should be, we'll be more than happy to take it to them. Well, um, uh, if I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but it is not. Uh, it is not if we have any thought. You have presented this, and you are saying that there will be art here. We're not so calling it art. They're calling it a, a, oh. a project component. I was hesitant from the get-go to call art because I can <laughs> define art differently than you can. So I think this is just purely a, a, um, an element that's being added to the side of the facade. But I don't know how to define art in a civic component. And we're not there yet. So I hate to hold up the process uh, in terms of the, the private developer moving forward because we don't have the process defined yet. So I hesitate to call this piece art. It's purely an installation um, articulation of the building facade at this point. Then in that case, I would recommend you come back with a south facade that I can approve. You have brought something here for our approval or recommendation, and you are telling me that this is not the one. It's See, not the what? It is not what it is. You are saying? It is what it is. That's, uh, that's 
the articulation that they are proposing to the side of the facade at this point. However, if we're calling it art or non-art, that's not for me to decide at this point. Okay, let's not call art. Mm -hmm. Those figures, who is going to produce that figure? Those they figures. are. The, the, the architects will de, um, define the, uh, the specifications. A fabricator will fabricate. Yes, I understand. I understand that I'm not going to cut it. A fabricator right. will do it. But is there any artist involved? Or the I fabricator don't so. will at do this it? point, my, our understanding is that the architect will uh, produce the specifications for those figures uh -huh. as, you, as you see it on the drawings. Mm -hmm. So by, by putting word art there, I was thrown off and I went on and on. So if there is no art there, it's a different story. Okay. Well, oh, perhaps uh, uh, there's Jesse can help. If I may intervene a little bit, Commission, but I consider it art. There, art, art is a very hard definition to define, and and we definitely, I think, would take uh, this recommendation to the owner to to acknowledge that we could look into some particular sculptures or uh, Robert Graham would be another great artist who could, Absolutely. could, could give us a piece as well. Absolutely. Of course, if this was going to be a million dollar piece, I, I, I can't tell you who's going to I will write the check. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> but we do want to add a decorative element much like what you see here. Uh, at, at this time, we recommend it to be metal figures. And if that's you consider it as art, by all means, you know, it, it is what your eyes behold and, and see it and call it. But this is what we are presenting, this is what we recommend, and this is what we're the, the path we're trying to pursue. And, and, and I, I think it's very nice. Thank you. I think it's very interesting. Mm. And if it well, happens, like, uh, if it happens the night more actually. power to the tenant, more power to the owner, because obviously the blank wall is, is a real absence of anything. And, and that's oh. why they're doing it. Uh, yeah, exactly. To get tenants in there as well. Okay. Yeah, I agree with Mike. I mean, anything better than blank wall. Um, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'll close the public hearing. We'll discuss this. Um, I'll start. To, who wants to start? I think it's a. I'll go ahead and start. I guess. I think it's a very nice proposal. I'm. I'm happy with it. I think every all the elements seem to be in harmony with each other. It's it's well well presented. Um, um, I was just a little. I mean, obviously, there's a few things on the drawings and the, what's existing don't quite coincide. So we're, we're, uh, I'm going beyond my, maybe my, own, my own instinct, but I'm going to say that I think it will all come off very nicely. So I'm happy with the project. Yeah, I'm in favor. I think uh, whatever you're proposing for the change will be much more nicer what it is now because I'm passing by almost every day and I see those blank walls and it's just bothering me and I'm glad somebody thought of just changing those uh, facades at some point and I think it's going to be great. I like the lighting a lot uh, behind. Thank you, Commissioner Stefani. Commissioner Amir. Dito, I like the project too. I like it very much. I think we are going to the right direction. It's an important building in the, at that corner and I, I, I like even, I'm sorry, if I uh, speak against your taste, but I like the canopies as well. <laughs> I would be delighted if the artwork is, is really, if, if it happens. Uh, not, for, not only for this building, we need some art in Glendale. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Mayor. I agree with uh, my colleague's comment. Uh, anything better than a blank wall for me there? So I think the improvements are well done. I just want to comment one thing. I think they touched on it. Make sure uh, eventually you get a correct drawing, you know, where all these canopies are and mm -hmm. everything yeah. else. I think this is a great improvement to the building. I happen to know it from the 70s. I used to shop at Woolworth. So. <laughs> we won't hold that again. <laughs> no, thanks. Uh, but uh, I agree uh, with the Commissioner Miriam that you know something special needs to take place. But again, it's voluntary. So anything better than nothing. Okay. Thank you very much. And I'll entertain a okay, motion. Counsel, before you make your motion, can I just are you are you um, okay with the potential locations for the signage? And um, staff okay. will approve no. the signage if it's consistent with I'm your. Okay. <coughs> I'm okay with it, but I have to see fonts and things like that. Is that going to come later? Yes. 
So we'll, we'll yeah. But what we're, we're hoping to do to move the project along to get a tenant in there, we're not sure that they won't be able to get in before your next hearing on the 26th of January. Mm -hmm. So given the previous approvals for signage on the building, can you let staff, me, and, and others in the design studio look at this to make sure it's consistent with previously approved signage? We, 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 Where was the signage? Question. I didn't I uh, pay attention. Where was the, the existing signage? The, the, before you in, in the, the historic signage in this photo, when you look at the Zany Brainy sign, right. that was part of the approval. They were the tenant moving in at the time the commission considered the uh, second floor addition and the storefront alterations. So I don't think that any new sign is going to be as large or as colorful or as zany as that sign. Good. <laughs> okay, because I was gonna, but you're saying, though, it's going to be similar, the same program. It, so they have the option of these colors if they want to, in a sense. I, I think knowing that this is Staples, I think we've seen Staples right, signage yeah. on other businesses, so we have okay. a sense mm -hmm. of what it's going to look like. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, the, the main point is that it would be most likely internally illuminated mm -hmm. signage applied to the facade in areas that are undecorated. But definitely not box signs of any sort. Not a can, in other no, words. Well, these, 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 these were box signs. Well, individual signs. Not, not attached to the box. Is they? Right. If I may, Mr. Chair, box signs are not allowed in, the, in our sign ordinance and in the uh, <coughs> downtown specific plan. And I think what Mr. Platt is saying gingerly is <laughs> to forego uh, the, uh, the the request to actually see it again, the signage, and give staff authorization to approve it. Uh -huh. I think that's what yeah, well, Let me ask you a question about that because I, mm -hmm. you, I one of your I one of your uh, pictures you showed the bo a squared an area for signage. Right. Is that what you were doing there? Mm -hmm. Those little. Areas, rectangles, yeah, rectangles. Is that what you're really talking about? That just in within that area, or could that area be stretched or well, elongated or anything else? On, on the brand, if you look at the Brand Avenue facade, the tenant is only going to occupy this corner unit, mm -hmm. and a new tenant is going to be in these two storefront bays. Presumably, this tenant would like to have signage above their mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. So I push this over as much to the side without obscuring the decoration. Mm -hmm. On the Wilson facade. Where do we go? On the Wilson facade, there's a little more space that uh, mm -hmm. they could use. I still imagine that it would move toward the corner to enhance visibility for people driving north on Brand, but uh, not too far into the corner. Yeah, we don't we don't want it to get oh. over this kind oh, of decorative yeah. banding. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I'll entertain a motion. I would move that the commission approve the proposal. Uh, with two conditions, and those conditions were put with the staff, and I agree with them wholeheartedly, that the staff must review and approve the placement, attachment method, and overall appearance of new signage to ensure that it consists with sign previously approved by the Commission for this hearing, for this building, I'm sorry. And the second uh, uh, would be that an authentic irrigation system be included in the proposal for the new planning bed, and can we add also the, uh, and also uh, with the planning bed, uh, an art element with, done by a name artist uh, to be part of staff's review and approval. And you, and you can only add that with your colleague's consent, of course. I was going to say, is that who, a who, who dares to Who dares to oppose me? <laughs> <laughs> is your name Caesar? <laughs> Caesar. <laughs> yeah, but is that a uh, condition? Uh, or I was just, uh, you can eliminate that, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am just You're really pushing that artist thing today, aren't you? You know, we need that in our city, but we are in the... We're going to get motion. Our, our artists have to stick together. Right? <laughs> it's get well, we're in the middle of motion, so it, it, it just I want to make sure it's just a suggestion. Not I, a, uh, uh, yeah, if if you agree with me, we'll, I, we will put that sentence. If you do not, then we will not put that sentence. So how does uh, my colleagues feel about? Uh, I agree that we need uh, more artwork, uh, especially on brand, um, because it gives character to the main portion of the city. I agree if there is artwork instead of just plain figuring. Okay. Okay. How about you, Mr. Adrian? Well, I, I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm going along with what uh, uh, Glendale Redevelopment Agency has mentioned at this hearing is that it's a voluntary That's right. thing. And I, I don't know if we're in a position to... Uh, I would uh, Personally, I would hope we get the, the, the so-called cutouts that we're talking about 
if nothing else, if if we if it becomes an issue with the owner that these because we're we're, we're going with this art idea, that we lose the cutouts, then we really we really hurt ourselves. So I'm not I can't say I'm in favor of the art, although it would be great, no question about okay, that. Let's okay. How I'm about not, you? Well, I agree with Mr. Edin in this case. Okay, in that uh, case, eliminate the art, and <laughs> these two, these two would be the conditions for approval. I make a motion to approve it. I Five see. steps going backward toward the art, but that's all right. Well, that's uh, we want to see something there, yeah, but we right. don't want to. It's voluntary. That's the whole. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll second well. it. I'll second the motion. Thank you. Roll call, please. Commissioner Adrian. Yes. Commissioner Emerian. Yes. Commissioner Stepanian. Yes. And Chair Mardian. Yes. Uh, next item is 6 c 18 West Kennet Road, Glendale Registry nomination. Uh, excuse me, before we go, can, can, oh. mm -hmm. go ahead. We're ready? Right. Okay, this is a uh, Glendale Register nomination for a house that is uh, called Cedar Knoll. Some of you may know this house. It's fairly prominent when you're driving along uh, Kenneth Road. Uh, we're located in northwest Glendale, and specifically we're at the corner of Dorothy Drive, and the house faces on to Kenneth Road on the south side of the street. And when we look at the house, perhaps you recognize it. It's a, a really fine example of colonial revival architecture in Glendale. It, uh, really has all of the details in place and the quality of the craftsmanship and the detailing I think is uh, quite exemplary. Um, here's another view of the house and you see the little sign in front of it called Cedar Knoll. One of our issues at staff level uh, when people propose to name a house um, where it doesn't come from us saying a significant person lived in the house, we want to make sure that this is not just the current owner's whim that they like to give their house a name, but we want to make sure it's a somewhat historic name. We know that this house has had a sign posted in front of it called calling it Cedar Knoll for decades, going back at least to the 60s and probably further. And the Cedar name comes from the initial owner, who was Robert Boyd. And Robert Boyd was a lumberman who may have been a very significant figure in the history of Southern California and lumbering in the area and lumber sales, but we didn't get enough information in the proposal um, to really say that Robert Boyd meets our criteria for significance as an individual figure. Um, more research someday may suggest that he does, but we did believe the house meets the criterion for significance based on its architecture to move the nomination forward. So basically you can say that this man, if he was involved in the lumber business, he certainly loved trees and he arranged to have a number of cedar trees um, supposedly of several different cedar species planted on the property, and you can see how, how well they've grown over the years. So you have these uh, fairly vast uh, trees, and it's pretty hard to take a picture of this house without having trees kind of uh, cutting into the picture at some point. Here's a couple of shots just showing some of the details around the uh, entryway and then the sun porch that projects from the west side of the house. And like I said, we think, you know, the level of detailing, the sense of proportion is very pure to the uh, colonial revival style, and it seems like a very good example. As we move toward the back sides of the house, we see that that level of detailing and just the kind of character of colonial architecture is maintained across the site. The upper pictures in the lower right are the different rear and sides of the house, and then the picture at the bottom shows the garage where servants' quarters were installed. There's the little wing on the left, and then there's also an upstairs addition. You can see the stairway going up on the right side of the garage to the upstairs portion. Those were additions, but otherwise, most of the additions to this house have been made on the inside, and even there, there aren't that many. So the house really does reflect its period of construction. I think I forgot to mention it was built in 1922. Um, Boyd himself was the contractor on the project. We don't have an architect. Um, we don't know if he did it or if he uh, hired someone to do it. Um, is Tim Gregory here? No, Tim, right there. Uh, Tim Gregory is here representing the owner who couldn't be here today. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions. It, is this an owner-occupied piece of property or it's, not? It's occupied by a relative of the owner. It's been since the 60s, uh, Mr. McCarley has owned the house, and he's uh, moved out uh, to Palm Desert. So he still owns the house, and a relative lives in it currently. Okay. Okay. Right. Is, uh, is this time to ask? Uh, sure. Go ahead. Ask questions. Um, in staff recommendation, there is no mention of the applicant asking for 
Meals Act. They are not asking for that. Yeah, Mr. McCarley has owned the house for so long that he wouldn't benefit from the Mills Act, so he chose not to pursue it. Mm -hmm. If he were to sell the house and someone bought it because it's on the register, they would qualify for the Mills Act so they could file an application at that time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, anybody want to follow up on the public hearing? Mr. Gregory? Please fill out a card at the end. Oh, okay. Uh, my name is Tim Gregory. I am uh, a uh, historical consultant, and Mr. McCarley hired me to research the history of the house and to prepare the applications. Um, as Jay mentioned, he is uh, quite elderly, and he's caring for an ailing wife in Palm Desert. Otherwise, he would have been here himself. But he asked me to come just to convey to you his great desire to see the house put on the uh, Vindell register. Uh, he's lived there, owned it for almost 45 years. And he's the fourth owner, and he's put a lot of work into the restoration of it. And as Jay mentioned, he wouldn't benefit from the Mills Act, but he's very hopeful that when it comes time for him to sell it, that the next owner will carry on the restoration that has been done all through the years, and he doesn't want to see it changed or demolished or anything like that. Thank you. Any Thank questions you to the Thank you. speaker? Thank you. I don't have any. No. Thank you very much. I'll close the public hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, any questions? Any, we'll start a discussion. Uh, um, should I start? Sure. Go ahead, Mr. Kennedy. All right. Go ahead. Thank you. Yeah. Um, for my colleagues as well as for Jay, I, I went by the house. Are we looking at the house as well as the guest quarters as well? Yeah, the entire property would be part entire of the property. designation. I think the only thing is, is it's a sweet house. It's a very nice home. So, you know, I thought it was it's lots of appeal. Um, the only thing I looked at when I when I drove by were the garage doors on the guest house. I guess that was the only thing that threw me a little bit. They're metal doors. Those mm -hmm. two doors there. Or metal. Mm -hmm. um, if something could be done, I don't know. They don't seem to be quite in keeping with the with the style of the architecture. And, and that's you know you, there are several choices here. We, we've designated houses before that have non-original features. Garage just recently one with non-original garage doors. Um, in the future, when these garage doors fall apart, this property's you know they would have to make an application to the city to replace those because it's mm -hmm. on the register, so we could take care of it then also. Okay. Okay. Thank Is that a new roof, by the way? Was that a new new roof put on the house some time ago? Or you want to? I no, not if it's wood shake. <laughs> it's not wood shake. No, it's, it's not. like cow shake. A, Is that a cow shake roof? I didn't find a permit roof? for a newer roof. There was one put on, I think, in the 60s. There was a permit for that, but uh -huh. I didn't find one any. Well, I say new. I don't. I mean, it's not obviously. It's not the original. Nothing original about it, but I, I mean, it, it looks like a nice, you know, cow shake. Mm -hmm. What that is? Yeah, yeah it looks like a cow shake. Okay, that's all. Okay. Mm. Any discussion? Any other? Mr. Miriam. Well, I I have seen that house. First of all, I like to mention that it is an honor to meet you, Mr. Gregory. Your name comes up often and I, I always wanted to see this man whose reports come here all the time but anyway nice to meet you sir I have seen the house and I have seen it for many years my daughter lives on Virginia and I go there often it's a very nice house as Mr. Adrian said my concern is uh, in the past Almost all the houses that have come before us, uh, they have been owner-occupied, and uh, all of them, almost all of them, have been just beautiful, very well kept. And you could drive by and look at them and just see that this is historical. This house really needs some, some, some help. It needs some cleaning, possibly some new paint, uh, we are designating this, uh, but we are not designating this to preserve and not allow somebody to tear it down. We are presenting this as a historical uh, resource. So before I vote uh, for this, I would like to see the house cleaned, painted. Uh, I will hesitate to do it now. Because it might just go down and down, and 
is ready for demolition. I don't know what will happen to it. Is it difficult to do that kind of a thing? Um, I would think twice before we made that a condition of designation because in many situations, and I've seen in other cities, um, significant properties that are in somewhat dilapidated condition, someone may say we shouldn't designate this because, you know, it's, you know, the wall is falling apart or something else. Ultimately, it's the designation that's going to protect it so that we ensure when changes are made in the future that we're going to be incrementally bringing the house closer to its historic appearance, and I think that's one of the goals of preservation. Um, I don't think that because a house isn't owner-occupied, we should take that into consideration. I'm a renter myself, so there's that. I live in a historic building in the city of Los Angeles that's designated by the city. You know, me and most of my neighbors take, we love our building, so we actually take care of it. Um, Mr. McCarley, as the owner of the house, you know, still has control over its fate. We could certainly make a recommendation, and, and you could also make that as a condition if your colleagues agree, but I'd just be hesitant to kind of make that a condition because we don't know what we're going to see in the future and you know we're really looking at this as a historic artifact historic artifacts aren't always crisp and perfect um, even if you're right I, I agree there's it could certainly use some cosmetic uh, improvements. It take very little money to do that even if somebody takes a hose <laughs> and washes mm -hmm. there's a lot of dust on it of course histor uh, if I may just finish Mr. Right, uh, yeah, right. um, of course historic buildings they don't have to be immaculate they go often they go uh, and they are just ready to be demolished and somebody comes and refurbishes but this is this is a building that it is so prominently and beautifully sitting there it's just shame not to do a little bit to it it will not be a condition of if I make a, a, a motion but I really would like to see that happen um, if we can make make a recommendation I would be happy but yeah, and I could certainly, and I think Mr. Gregory also could relay that to the owner. Um, he definitely loves the house. I can I can tell from talking to him. Um, so he might actually be interested in taking you up on that. Well, actually, when I was reading this uh, for today, uh, it, my my thought was a little different. But today, when Mr. Gregory says that, well, this is an elderly gentleman. Eventually, he will sell it. I would want somebody who buys this to know that this is a historical resource. He knows that he's limited, that he cannot demolish it. So it, it changed my thought a little bit. Uh, but anyway, that and is my and designation when when properties are sold, as the uh, mm -hmm. escrow agents and the title people go through that, that's part of their due diligence to tell the new owner that the house is designated. So. Okay. But anyway, thank you. I concur with the comments that my colleagues have made. I used to live down the street from it uh, years ago, and I drive by it very often. I think it's a unique home, and I think it's a great example of the colonial architecture. But I do agree with Mr. Uh, Amirian that this house is kind of dilapidated, and it needs help. It needs some refreshing. Uh, I know it doesn't have to be crisp and polished and all that, but it's, you know, it's a prominent corner, and I understand he's not asking for the Mills Act, uh, uh, but in some time then it might. Uh, but I do agree that you know some some work needs to be done before it gets worse. Uh, and, and we and we do in in the Glendale Register Ordinance we have kind of basic maintenance level requirements. I'm not sure that this has gone below that threshold at this point. But okay. um, With that, I'll go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, if 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 the owner was asking for Mills Act, I would have been more adamant yeah, there we could to spend some money up front. And, but now that there, he's not, so that's a different story. Oh, we'll definitely relay it to okay. him. Right. So. I just want to ask Thank a question. You. Also, if I may. Sure. Okay. Almost done. Yeah. Close the hearing. Yeah, close the I didn't get a chance to go, go inside the home. I was just curious. Is the inside of the home... Um, Pretty nice, or I actually went inside. It's still intact, very much intact. Mm -hmm. I mean, the colors, the moldings, the crown moldings. The but in the, the condition of the interior is, is uh, as well. What you see well, on the the, I mean, the, the kitchen and bathrooms need upgrade, but it's you know, mm -hmm. it's it's. I mean, the air hasn't changed inside. 
Mm. I didn't know you could go in. I did. Well, the, the gentleman offered me to fight the oh. suit. Oh, yeah. well, special, special treatment. <laughs> <Wait, wait, wait. laughs> just, just to remind everyone, the the interiors are not part of designations That's for the Glendale correct. Register. But when the commission goes on its tours, the owners often allow you to go in, which gives a nice sense of the whole yeah. picture. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it it shows its history inside yes. more than it does from okay. outside, I, in my opinion. But again, I'll entertain a motion uh, on the designation. No. I want to ask another question before we do that, if I may. I ask, I ask, obviously, I could ask Jay about that. You mentioned you went over it a couple of times, Jay, and I just want to make sure I understand it. So, if if we find the home to be in somewhat ill repair, mm -hmm. and uh, I drove by it, I didn't actually get out and physically walk the house. I didn't want to disturb the the tenant. But from what I could visualize, especially in that photograph you show right there in the bottom right hand corner, that the upper level balcony looks. It would almost look like there might be some dry rot work happening in there and mm -hmm. things are getting a little bit squeaky and going to fall over. Now, you said that you can't, you can't, we can recommend it, it can be a recommendation, but obviously we can't uh, twist the owner's arm so and make him you, you, do you anything. Could, you could condition it, uh, you could condition designation on that. You've, you've done that before on, on window issues and other mm -hmm. things. Um, to me, it's not the greatest precedent because when you're conditioning a window, you're actually doing that incremental change and making sure that it's going to happen. Here, you know, in general, houses in Glendale, whether it's through uh, the commission or planning staff or through the neighborhood services uh, team, um, there, there are certain basic maintenance requirements that we expect of all properties in Glendale before they become nuisances. Um, this isn't nearly at that point. Um, but if you chose to condition it, uh, we could ask the city attorney's office. But I don't think no, I don't, you know yes. that's. I don't want to go that problem. way. I'm just. What's the consensus of the commission whether you want to condition this or not? Condition. The uh, you know. I would. Up. I wouldn't. You wouldn't. No. Mr. Adrian. And Mr. Stefanian. No? Uh, I like the house, and I think it's going in the right direction by doing this. Uh, being giving it a designation like this, I think that's okay. very favorable. So I, I guess I will back off on that idea too. Okay. With that, I'll entertain a motion. Okay. I may I make a motion. Go ahead. I move that the Historic Preser Preservation Commission recommend to the City Council that the property at 418 West Kennedy Road be a designated historic resource in the Glendale Register of Historic Resources based on the findings identified in the staff determination. Second, please. I second. Thank you. Roll call. Commissioner Adrian. Aye. Commissioner Amirian. Yes. Commissioner Stepanian. Yes. And Chair Martin. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Gregory. Thank you all. Good to meet you. Nice to see you, Emil. <laughs> yeah. um, item 7, Planning Department Updates and Informational uh, Briefings. Uh, the only thing I have today is just, uh, I mentioned it before, but just to remind the Commission that the two uh, historic districts, Cottage Grove and Ardeven Highlands, are moving through the process. Um, testimony from Commissioners is, is welcome at the hearings if you're interested. Uh, Planning Commission is at 5 o'clock on December 17th. And City Council for the introduction, which is really the important one where they take public testimony, is tentatively scheduled for January 27th. And your next meeting is the 26th, so we can uh, you fill can you in at that point yeah, if it's uh, still on. Thank you. Our next meeting is January 26th. January 26th, right. In place, same time. And the next item is eight comments from Commissioner. I'd like to make a comment, but it has nothing to do with any of the agenda items. Well, before you do that, can I make a comment? That Why not? Might have, um, do we, are we, oh, will there be an update sh shortly on the Sealy building? Um, we could schedule one. We, we don't have one planned. There have been no changes to the uh, design that you guys have approved already. The last time they were here? Yeah, there, there's, there's interior work going on, some of the improvements to the interior. Thank you, Jake. Go ahead, uh, Commissioner uh, Miriam. Yeah, i like to make uh, a comment regarding our um, uh, municipal services building. I was kind of reluctant when we were discussing raising of the uh, lower area to the level that is now and kind of consistently worried about the outcome of it. I have not been to the city hall for the last several months. 
today when I was coming I had a chance to look at it I think it turned out wonderful I think it's a better space it relates better to the first floor and the fountain is very nice and I think it, it became a very nice project I just wanted to say that in public great thank you you have to come and have lunch with us once we can, once we're allowed down there for lunch. Yeah. Nobody invites me. I'll go to lunch with you. Commissioner Stefan, any comments? No comments. Um, thank you. I have one comment. Uh, this is my last uh, day for chairman uh, for this year, and I would like uh, somebody to nominate or whoever is our sen next in line for seniority. I believe it's uh, Stephanie. So. Um, are we doing that now well, or in January? I don't know. That's why I'm bringing it up. Do we do it now I or believe the agenda uh, for January? Or yeah, I'll, I'll put it on the agenda for January. We can't do it now, especially since yeah, uh, Stephanie's not here. But yeah, I'll put it. I'll agendize yeah, it, and you can you. vote uh, for uh, change of chair. Okay. okay. And with that, uh, I have no specific comments. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, do, you do you have another comment? I just wanted to say that um, it is commissioner comments period. Uh, sure, I'm sorry. Right. I just wanted to say that I enjoyed your uh, your chairmanship and your leadership. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. And you are not done yet because until the end of the year we might have a special meeting and you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't say that. <laughs> no, I think uh, we're done. I appreciate uh, your comments and I've been, you know, thankful for this position and. Uh, Everybody gets their turn, so I just wanted to make sure that we have a transition next mm -hmm. time. And thank you, Olinji, entertain a... I move to adjourn. Thank you. Second. Adjourn. Thank, oh. you. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And happy holidays, everyone. Yes. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs>